All right, hello, Physics 157. So I'm going to talk about the situation when you want to calculate the work done in a certain process where maybe we're going from some configuration A to a configuration B. Okay. But the pressure is changing during that process. And so we can't use just the simple P delta V formula. Okay, so we want we want to find the work from A to B. Okay. And so the way we're going to do this is first to think about a function W of V. Okay, so what is W of V? So W of V is going to be the area under the curve from the initial volume V initial up to volume V. Okay, so let me draw that. So we know W is the total area under the curve from A to B. And now I'm just saying W of V is the area that I've shaded in from the initial volume to some volume V. So that would be the work done in part of the process where we start at V initial and we just go to the volume V. Okay, so we can't really calculate that one very easily either. It's sort of the same problem as we started with. Okay, but now there's a nice observation. And the observation is that if I look at W of V plus just a little bit more volume, V plus delta V, okay, well, what is that? That's the area under the graph from that initial volume up to volume V plus DV. Okay, so let's draw that. Okay, so now we now we have this V plus DV. It's a little bit further along the volume axis. Okay, and so that one is the now the full shaded region. Okay, and that one's also hard to calculate so far. But the nice thing is the difference is actually pretty simple. So if I take W of V plus DV and then I subtract W of V, okay. So then that's just the area under the graph from V up to V plus DV. Okay, so that guy is now just that dark shaded region. Okay. All right, so that's simple because that is approximately just a rectangle. Okay, so we can actually calculate that. Okay, so this is approximately equal to that distance there, which is the pressure at our volume V, times the width of that, which is just our, our change in volume DV. Okay, so that guy is equal to the P of V times DV, which is the area of the skinny rectangle. So now what do we do? So now we can notice that if I divide both sides of that by dv, 
then we get this equation that w of v plus v d dv minus w of v, so this little bit of extra work divided by that dv is approximately equal to this P of V, okay, whatever the pressure is at volume V. Okay, now why is it just approximately equal to? Um, it's basically because if you look at, let's just zoom in here to the, the very top of this curve. Um, okay, so now the pressure actually might be changing just a little bit from the start of this to the end of it. Okay. And so if we just calculate the area of the rectangle, um, we're missing out a tiny little bit of area at the top. Okay. And so that's why it's approximately equal to. But we can make that a better and better approximation as we take this change in volume to zero. Okay. So this becomes exact in the limit where dv goes to zero. Okay, okay but, but now look at the left hand side. That is exactly the definition of the derivative of this function w of v. Okay, so for in the limit where we have super small steps and dv goes to zero, this equation just tells us that the derivative of this function w of v is equal to our function that tells us what the pressure is at the different volumes. All right, so now we're, we're almost done. So what we've just learned is that that function, that area function that we define that tells us the work up to the volume V, what we just learned is that that is a function whose derivative is P of V. Okay, so now how do we solve this problem? What we can do is, step one, just find a function whose derivative is P of V. Okay, so the, the way that these problems would normally work is someone gives you the function P of V. If you don't know what the function p of v is, you can't really do the question. So let's say you're given the function of p of p of v. Okay, so example, someone might tell you that p of v equals a times v squared. Okay, okay so, so we're going to find a function whose derivative is p of v, and we'll call this f of v. Okay, okay so w of v is is a function whose derivative of p of v is p of v, um, but we don't really know which one. So, so in our example, if p of v equals a v squared, then f of v is a third a v cubed, um, but it could could be that plus any arbitrary constant. So what we what we know is that w of v must be f of v plus a constant because w is a function whose derivative is p. We found this other function f whose derivative is p. And if those guys have the same derivative, they must just differ by a constant. So of course we want to know what, what W is. And so we just have to figure out what is this constant. And so then what we can use is that W 
at the initial volume is just equal to zero. Okay, so that's that's the way we define W is the area under the graph from VI up to volume V. And so if we go from VI just to VI, that's no area at all. And so we know that W of VI is equal to zero. Okay. And so if W of V is equal to our function F of V plus some constant C, then if we plug in W of VI equals zero, then we get F of VI plus C equals zero. So the constant is equal to minus F of VI. Okay, and so now we are done because we know what W of V is. So W of V is equal to F of V, this function we found whose derivative is equal to p of v and then we add the constant which is minus f of v i and what we wanted to know was the work going from v initial to v final and so now we can plug in v equals v final so we have that the work that we wanted to find originally that's equal to our function evaluated at v final and that's equal to f of v final minus f of v initial okay and so in our in our little example there we would just end up having um, if we found say say we picked f of v equals one third a v cubed then we would just evaluate w equals one third a v final cubed minus one third a v initial cubed Okay, so in practice, you don't have to do all these steps. You just have to say someone gives you the function p of v. You just then pick any f, any function f with f prime of v equals p of v. And then you evaluate w to be f of v final.